Hi, I'm Ben Greasley, and in this video we're going to look at exporting render passes from Arnold. We're going to look at the different passes we can produce and why we would tend to use them. And we're going to look at the different data and driver methods Arnold uses in order to create all of these passes and the control that we have for that. Within Maya, I have a very simple scene setup that has a series of spheres, all with a different type of material applied onto them. Some of these spheres are just default diffuse shaders, some of them are transparent glass, others are reflective surfaces, some have self-illumination, and others have fur and motion applied onto them. And we can see from this, if I look at my pre-rendered image, this is the type of image that we're going to receive where some of our spheres are just diffuse spheres, others have Arnold fur applied onto them, others have motion blur, and the glass and subsurface scattering accordingly. We can see from this initial render that we have a lot of different factors applied into our image. Some of them are very, very diffuse and just have no reflection at all. Others are purely reflective. Others have subsurface scattering and some have specular highlights on them as well. And we're going to look at the way that Arnold breaks all of these different facets down into different groups for us to use within our composite. Because just being able to use a single default render can be very useful, but it doesn't give us a lot of control later on in our compositing. So we're going to start off by looking at the diffuse render types. To gain access to all of our AOV passes, we do so by going to the Arnold Render dialog. And within this menu, we can see that we have our Arnold Renderer tab that gives us all of our controls for our render settings. And we have an AOVs tab next to it. AOVs is a term that stands for Arbitrary Output Variables, and is a global term that can be used for all of our different multipass rendering setups. Within this menu, we have a few different options. We have an enabled option that allows us to enable, disable, and batch only our AOV passes. We can specify which view we want to see within our Arnold render window. And we're able to use AOV composition as well. We have controls over default drivers, which we're going to see shortly when we get into our actual AOVs themselves. The AOVs within Arnold work on a shader basis. We have five different shader types to work with on the left hand side, and we have built in utility shaders as well. We're going to start out by looking at the available AOVs from the AI standard shader, as this tends to be one primarily used. If I click on my AI standard, we have a whole list of different available AOVs that will be applied from objects in our scene that have this shader type. We can see that we have direct, diffuse, and specular. We have emission, indirect, diffuse, and specular, reflection, refraction, and subsurface scattering. And we're going to start by just looking at the direct diffuse pass by selecting the pass and then adding it to the active AOVs tab. We will see it is then added to the active AOVs list on the right hand side and to the list at the bottom. And this list at the bottom is where we have greater control over our AOV pass. We are able to specify its name. We are able to specify its data type, if it's RGB, RGB alpha, vector information, floating point information, integers, booleans. By default, this is a RGB data type, which is correct for the direct diffuse type. And then we are able to specify the driver and filter types that we are using. We can see at the moment that both of these methods are bracketed on the left and right hand side of them, and this indicates that they are the default drivers being used. And the default driver for the direct diffuse is a EXR data type with a Gaussian filter applied onto it. What I am able to do is I can click on my driver tab and I can specify a different driver to be used. I could specify it to be a JPEG or a Maya IF file type or a PNG. And I can also specify the filter type. It can either be our default Gaussian, or we have a whole long list. We have box filtering, we have closest filtering, and a whole load of different options available to us if we need them. I'm going to leave these as the defaults for the minute. I'm then able to edit these driver and filter types in greater detail by using the small triangle on the right hand side. By clicking on this, we'll get a list of options, and I can select my driver. 
by selecting my driver it will appear in the attributes editor on the right hand side and give us greater control over our settings. We can see that it's the EXR file type from the top. It is using a zip compression type. We have a lot of other options available to us but zip1 is a good method to use. We can specify that this can be a half precision driver type which means that it'll reduce our file size from 32-bit floating point to 16-bit floating point. We have a few other options for tiled, preserving layer names. We have auto crop, which is very useful for EXR file types and will save our file names. And we also have controls down the bottom for overriding path prefix so we can change the file name that we're going to be using and merge AOVs. One of the benefits of using an EXR multipass file setup is that at the end of the render we will have one EXR file that will contain all of the different passes. But this is only available to us if we enable this Merge AOVs button here. I'm going to enable this because that is the method we want to use. We also have output modes that will only output our AOVs based on batch render or graphic user interface render. I'm going to leave it on both for the minute as that is what I want to work with. It should be noted that the default Arnold driver is the global driver and will apply to all of our AOV passes that use the default EXR driver type. If I change my merge AOVs or my tiled or half precision buttons within this, it will affect all of the other active AOVs I have in my scene that use my EXR driver type. I also have controls that I can specify my filter and from my filter I can specify if I want it to be a Gaussian filter type I can specify the width of my filter type as well. But not only being able to change the driver and filter type I can also apply additional driver and filters to each of the passes in my scene. Again by clicking on the small menu I can click add new output driver. By doing this I will get a secondary output driver created at the moment this isn't going to do anything differently, this is just going to create a secondary EXR Gaussian filter type and nothing will change. But if I specified this to be a JPEG with a closest filter type, now if I render out my scene I will get an EXR Gaussian of my direct diffuse and I will also get a closest JPEG of my direct diffuse as well. I'm going to remove my secondary drivers by again clicking on this going to Output Driver 2 as it has created a new Output Driver for us and clicking Remove. From my AOVs menu I am also able to select the AOV node itself, in this case Direct Diffuse, and I am able to specify other information for it. I can apply more shaders, I can add objects to my AOV outputs, and I can change the drivers and filters used from this menu as well. But I'm not going to change any of these as the defaults are exactly what I need them to be. In this video, rather than rendering all of our AOVs as I am explaining them, I have rendered this scene out with all of my different AOVs beforehand and we are going to be comparing and contrasting them inside a compositing package. In this situation I have already rendered out my direct diffuse and so we are going to move over to a compositor to see how this looks. Here we can see the original beauty render for our shot, but if I change my view so we can see some additional information and show you the node graph, we will see all of the other available AOVs that I have rendered. In this situation, I'm just going to go to my Direct Diffuse and we are going to view that. And we can see that the Direct Diffuse render is only showing us the diffuse contribution from the direct lighting in our scene. This scene is being lit with a HDRI map, so we are still getting some ambient lighting coming from different directions, but don't get that confused with ambient GI lighting that is bouncing within our scene. All the lighting contribution in this shot is purely coming directly from the light source. We don't have any reflections, and we don't have any self-illumination in the scene, just the direct illumination coming from it. And we can see that this is a very smooth, clean render for us to be able to use. The next pass that we're going to look at is the Direct Specular Pass. Again, if I select it from my available AOVs and add it to my active AOV list, we can see that it is added to the list at the bottom. Again, this is using the default EXR driver type and the default Gaussian filter type. If I then select the driver quickly, 
we will see that it is the driver that we have set up previously and Merge AOVs has been turned on. Because Merge AOVs has been turned on, all of our AOVs are rendered as a single EXR file type. As we can see from our render within our compositor, all of our files are coming in as this single file type. Again, if we look over here where I have split them out, we can see that we have a direct specular pass. If I view my direct specular pass, we will see that we only have the specular contribution of our render appearing in this image. Again, this is just the direct specular contribution, so we are not getting any interaction from the objects within our scene. This is just coming from the light itself. Because our light is a HDRI map, we are getting different shapes appearing in the specular of our image. We can see the specular contribution of our Arnold hair. We can see the specular contribution in different shapes and in the reflection of our glass and within the reflection of our glossy reflections at the back of our scene and here. The next passes we're going to add are the indirect diffuse and indirect specular. I'm going to do these at once. I can select multiple menu options from our available AOVs and add them to our list. And again, these are using the default EXR and Gaussian data types. Within our compositor, we can see our indirect diffuse is just the indirect contribution from our scene. We can see that this appears to be quite noisy in our shot, and this is because of the GI lighting in our scene. In this situation, I would need to increase my diffuse GI contribution samples accordingly to make sure that this isn't as noisy. However, most of these problems will go away when we composite our shot together from the separate passes. The next pass we're going to have a look at is the emission pass. Again, by selecting it and adding it, it will then be added to our list. It is using the default data types. And within our compositor, we can see that it appears as our illumination within our scene. It is important to note that EXRs within Arnold will render out as floating point data types. This means that as I hover over my illumination, I can see the values in the bottom right hand corner have increased all the way up to 10, far above the default integer value of 1. And so I can see that this sphere is actually giving off light rather than just bouncing it in our scene. The last three types of information we have are reflection, refraction, and subsurface scattering that I'm going to add all in one go to our shot. Again, they are all added to the list, and I'll have to make my window slightly bigger to be able to see all three of them added at the bottom. The reflection pass will only show the indirect reflection in our scene. We can see that this is not showing the HDRI map in our shot at all, but it is just showing the secondary bounces of the objects interacting with each other within our shot. If we wish to see the HDRI map, we must see that on the specular pass. The refraction pass shows just the refractive objects in our scene. In this situation, we just have a single refractive sphere in the front of our shot. And again, everything else appears as black within our scene. We also have a subsurface scattering pass that we have created. However, this will appear entirely as black within our shot. And this is because all of the shaders within our Arnold render are not using the default subsurface scattering shader. We have the advanced skin subsurface scattering that we will see shortly, but no objects in our scene are using the default subsurface scattering parameter. We can now see that we have added all of the different passes available to us from the AI standard group. We can see this in our compositor. as this group of passes. All of these different passes are available to us from the AI standard shader. But we can see we have additional shaders available to us. We have this group in the top right hand corner which are relating into the skin subsurface scattering group that we will look at. And we have the other group in the top left hand corner which are available to us in the standard shader group and are more traditionally known as AOVs. And we will look at these as well. If I go to my AI Skin SSS AOV group, we can see that we have five AOVs available to us within this group, but we also have two active AOVs. 
The two active AOVs are direct diffuse and indirect diffuse, which are both available to us within the AI Skin SSS AOV group, but have already been activated from within the AI Standard group. This will happen occasionally where we have an AOV available to us within multiple AOV groups. If I look in my hair, we will see that we have all of the hair shader groups active within our active AOVs as they are all available to us from the AI standard shader. If I return to my AI skin shader, we will add all of these available AOVs into our render shot. We have the deep scatter, mid scatter and shallow scatter and we have primary and secondary specular reflections as well. If we select our sphere in the scene that has the AI skin shader and go to the shader parameters, we will notice the name of the AOVs relates into the options we have within the shader. We have shallow scatter, mid scatter and deep scatter, and we have primary and secondary reflections. These passes directly relate into these values as you will see in the compositor. Within the composite, we can see that we have five different passes based off the subsurface scattering skin shader. We have the shallow, mid and deep scatter, and we have the secondary and primary reflections. This allows us to add these together within our composite and gives us greater control over how we want our different scattering of light and reflections to work for our subsurface scattering options. The final area of AOVs that we're going to look at is from within the built-in AOV group. And this group does not relate into a shader type within our render, but a more traditional use of AOVs, which would be a utility pass that would allow us to make changes to our rendered image within our composite. If I select my built-in AOV group, we will get a list of different available AOVs and how we're able to use them. The names of these are relating into the different options we have. N, if I apply it, is a normal data pass, and we can see that a normal has a data type of vector. It's an EXR driver and it uses the default Gaussian filter, but the data type is different for this option. We can then see this in our composite. I have grouped together all of our utility passes in the top left hand corner to make this easier for us to see. And if I view my normal pass, we can see we get the normals for our objects in our scene. And this is affecting both the hair, the objects in our scene, regardless of their shader parameters. And we'll also get this with motion blur applied as well. The quality of the motion blur within our render is related into the anti-aliasing within our Arnold global settings as well. I can add the P available AOV which is a point position pass. And the point position pass, if I select and view it inside my composite, gives us a world position for each of our pixels within our scene. We then have a series of additional passes that we are going to use as well. I'm going to select all of them and add them to our active AOV list. All of them will be added to the list as we go. We can see that some of them have the closest data type applied to them already whereas others remain as the default EXR Gaussian data type. If I then return to my AOVs within my composite, we'll see how we use these. As well as the normal pass and the point pass that we have already used, we also have a depth pass. Initially, this will just appear to be a red image, but if I show you the values moving over it, we can see that we are actually getting values within depth. And if I grade my image accordingly, we will see the Z values for our AOV pass accordingly. I also have a motion vector pass. We can see that this is just affecting the moving sphere at the back of our shot and allows us to apply motion blur within the composite rather than having to do it within Arnold. We also have a pass for opacity. But as everything in this scene that we can see has a full 100% opacity, this is just appearing as a white mat for us. Through these AOVs, we are given a huge amount of control to be able to change and develop our shots within our composite to get the best final looking image that we possibly can.